Good morning, good morning, Maganda Numaga, Konnichiwa, Bonjour. <clears throat> what you're looking at is a little seedling. Um, the first one that's popping out that I started. And it makes me so happy that, you know, I know the Lord is the one that helps things grow or not grow. So, um,. Yeah, I don't know why it makes me so happy. It's something like I put that seed in the dirt and, and now it's growing. And again, I don't take credit that it's growing, but <clears throat> it just makes me happy. So I want to read to you Matthew chapter 7, um, verses 7 through 11. That's Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. It says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. <clears throat> For what man is there of you, whom, if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father in heaven give good things to them that ask him? <clears throat> now, the reason why I read um, that particular um, section is when I became born again in Christ, the Lord placed it in my heart to pray for certain things. I didn't pray for gifts of prophecy. I didn't pray to have gifts of healing or, or anything like that. You know, um, I prayed to be humble. The Lord saw that I had a lot of pride in my heart. And I did. You know, maybe not as prideful as, you know, some other people, but it's apples and oranges. If you're always comparing yourself to the worst of the worst, then yes, you can convince yourself that you're not that bad. But considering the fact that the Lord has me consistently remind myself to, to be humble, then obviously I had a tremendous amount of pride <laughs> in me that um, needed to be addressed, needed to be acknowledged. That's, that's the first part of healing. When the Lord converts you and delivers you from certain things, the first part is acknowledging that you have a problem. Just like if you're an addict. You know, I was an alcoholic before I came to Christ. You know, when I say I was an alcoholic, it means I was drinking every single day. I was pouring poison down my throat every single day. Okay? I had to acknowledge that that was a problem. That that wasn't cool to, to be drinking alcohol. You have to acknowledge the problem before you tackle it. Okay, and I knew long before I became born again that it was a problem. Even though I was making up excuses and hiding it. And I was very good at hiding it. I was a functioning alcoholic. I, could, I held up to four jobs at one time. Um, and I was responsible and people could count on me. When I said I was going to be somewhere, I was somewhere. But I was an alcoholic. I was drinking every single night. And then I'd feel sick most mornings. So when I became, again, when I became born again, I'm just sharing my testimony. Um, the Lord had me pray to be humble. Okay? The Lord... Um, placed in my heart to see others as myself. And I've said this a handful of times, that when I see someone else that's being like mouthy and presumptuous 
and stubborn and so on, I see myself. That's why I have understanding for that other person because I want the Lord to have understanding for me and patience for me. So it's not hard for me to have patience for someone else when I choose. The Lord is the one that placed it in my heart. I choose to see that person as me. Okay? That's what I choose to do every single time. No matter how hateful that person, you know, with their words or whatever towards me, I choose to see that that's me. Okay? That without Christ, that would be me. Let me say that once again. Without Christ, that would be me. So I'm thankful and I'm grateful every time I wake up and I still have a sound mind and I can still, I still have critical thought that I could still think and I can rationalize and process things and, and be able to see a bigger perspective that the Lord, the Lord's the one that gives me eyes to see. To be able to see myself in others. That you are no different. We're all here. Every single one of us, we're all here. None of us are different. Okay? None of us are worthy for the Lord's forgiveness. But yet, He shows His mercy. By not washing His hands completely clean of us, even though every single one of us are wretched. And don't deserve it because we were disobedient and we came up against the Lord. So, in that passage, when it says that, you know, if you ask for bread, you're not going to give your child a stone. Well, I ask for the Lord to keep me humble. The Lord being the light and everything that's in him, there's no darkness in him whatsoever, is not going to forsake me and turn away from me when I'm, when I'm asking with a, with a humble heart to please keep me humble. He took away my pride. I'm not saying that that doesn't mean that, you know, this being a spiritual warfare, that I'm not going to have prideful moments. But he's given me eyes to see, to recognize that, oh, 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 what are you doing? The Holy Spirit convicts me gently, and I come back to the Lord. I, I turn back to the Lord. Always. Anyhow, it's scary how much there is no fear. There's no fear. And, you know, it, it shows by people's actions and how they're very loose with their words and they don't understand that those same exact words are part of their testimony. So your day of judgment, everything that you have said, that you haven't humbled yourself and repented and turned from those ways, everything that you have said is your testimony. That is the truth. So... It's not me pointing the finger like, you know, you're doing this and you're doing that. It's me just making you aware that, look, I know there are many people who don't remember a lot of the things that they've said to other people. But 
There's a record that's being written. Your testimony. And every condemning word you've ever said towards someone else is your testimony of condemning yourself. That's what I mean by people not having a healthy fear. That you don't understand that you are your worst enemy. Let me repeat that again. You are your worst enemy. Okay, the Lord's not your enemy. I'm not your enemy. You are your worst enemy. I really hope I planted a good seed. I love you and God bless.